Tableau, Einstein is Salesforce's new vision for Tableau for the future. That's what they showed us in the showcase yesterday. But I have to be honest and say that a lot of what they showed us was actually available at Tableau conference. During the most recent keynote, Salesforce did actually show us many of the same notes. But the difference this time was that they gave us the whole experience. They walked us through the typical workflows that you typically be familiar with today, and they showed us how the whole platform is going to come together. On a high level, the best way to think of it is a centralization of the platform under one experience. Products now become experiences and the features that live within those products are now decomposed throughout the whole entire platform. Essentially, they've been decoupled from their previous homes and you can now experience them pretty much anywhere in the platform. And I think that's a really great move, but there's lots of other things to discuss. And so in the most recent video, I spent some time with Ravi immediately after the showcase. We recorded this yesterday and we talked about the experience. It's about 30 minutes as ever. Let's get stuck in. Ravi. We've just seen the future of Tableau. I think we can now respond to our last podcast <laughs> with an opinion on that, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, um, I think the definitely. the answer we I think there's a lot of answers we've got. Yeah, but it's answers to questions that had already been asked and answered <laughs> in a way, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot to unpick. If you're listening to this and you're wondering what the hell are they talking about? Um, Tableau have literally just finished presenting their, uh, vision for the future. Um, we have some hot takes, we have some opinions, um, we have some views. Ready for some I think there's a lot of good things. I'll have a lot of good things. I actually agree with Adam, what he said at the end of that session to say, Hey, there's a lot of good things to work with here, but I think there's also a lot of context and there's a lot of. It's going to be a journey, let's just say. So, yeah, <laughs> as I like to say, let's get stuck in. <laughs> so, 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 what did where, we say? We, we where shall about, we start? Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about the um, the fourth way of analytics last time, right? Like yeah. that was one of yeah. the core areas yeah. we, we mentioned, and it's got a name so, now. I think so. Yeah, this is it. This is actually a really important thing. Like the fourth wave was clearly a placeholder, whilst they were coming up with the product name, and the product name is Tableau Einstein. Ravi, Tableau I heard Einstein. you love this name, right? <laughs> Tableau Einstein on the built on the tab Einstein one platform. Yeah, um, yeah. I hate this name. I think the <laughs> the name is recycled. I think if the, the Einstein thing was existed within within the platform uh, within within Tableau as a widget as a genie, you had the Einstein genie, then you had. Um, Einstein, which is Salesforce's thing that already existed. And it just feels like it's just been repackaged, repurposed. Like they put it to one side, they're like, let's replace it with the genie. And then we're going to mm -hmm. take this Tableau Einstein thing and put it over mm -hmm. here. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in the way that they framed it, in my opinion. Um, I think actually, ironically, um, after we we sort of came after Tableau, or you've definitely come after Tableau Pulse. Uh, sorry, Tableau yeah. Pulse. <laughs> for a while. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah Tableau yeah. Pass actually would have been the perfect name for, for Correct. this experience. I think so. yeah, yeah. Right? Because yeah. for example, you could have had, you know, the demos we saw in this in this webinar, you had um Tableau and Slack integrations, Tableau with the CRM integrations. You could have said, well this is Tableau Plus and this is what we're going to call it. And this is Tableau Plus Slack and here's how it works. You can now type in a question blah 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 and you get you can have a conversation. Great. Uh, what if you're a CRM user? Well, I want to know these answers to my questions. Well, here's Tableau plus CRM. And mm -hmm. when we then see the extended, extensible Einstein one platform, you then have the different connectors where your data is stored and this idea yeah. of that you should act where you act normally. Um, yeah. So you could have Tableau plus Databricks, Tableau plus Teams. But sadly, we have Tableau Einstein. You've got a future in marketing, Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> No, a hundred percent. I always marked. find this funny and brands have the, I think brands at the moment, um, really try and find ways to differentiate the new things they're doing within their products. Yeah. And I actually think a lot of brands could do a lot of good from taking a leaf out of Apple, which is really just let's, simplify it. Yeah. Let's take the biggest brand in the world. Maybe, maybe you could learn a thing from Apple. Like Ravi, what is the iPhone called? The iPhone. The iPhone, just exactly. IPhone. Tableau can, can just be called Tableau. 
<laughs> you know it is called Tableau, but it is called Tableau. It has different flavors. It's called Tableau Server Cloud but Desktop. You, by adding something on, public, onto it, I think Tableau Public think, Desktop is now Tableau Desktop Public. Just but, but nice isn't cool isn't that the power of this? The opportunity they had here, which is, we'll come onto this later, but they clearly showed a unified experience. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it have been a power move to say? You've heard of desktop, you've heard of prep, you've heard of server, you've heard of cloud. Today, it's just all called Tableau, end of, right? And that communicates so much more about what they're actually doing with the platform than what we heard today, which is Tableau Einstein. And now I start to think, I know Tableau what Tableau is, but what's Einstein, right? I, I, know, I know, I know, I know Salesforce want to get this Einstein brand. They've paid a lot of money for it and all that jazz. They want to use it and all that jazz. But it's just a foreign brand to yeah. everyone who uses tableau like i've never used the term einstein in my video unless i'm referring to salesforce and so that's already it's just going to confuse people yeah it's it's already its own thing um i don't know i may, maybe we get too hung up on these things and frankly yeah. no one cares everyone's just going to call it tableau anyway and so you'll call it tableau einstein and people what do you call going, it the social media platform new? that elon musk owns what do you call it <laughs> some people still call it twitter some people call it x Whatever it is to you, you call it what you call it. It's the same so, thing. Yeah. So where this will be a mess, it will be searching and education and all that stuff. Because people will think, what's desktop? What's Einstein? Is Einstein a new product? Or, you know, like whatever. So yeah. Anyway, let's not get too uh, drawn into this. We have a name for the fourth wave. It's called Tableau Einstein. Right. What is Tableau Einstein? I think that's the next question, right? Let's, let's sort of break this down. And we can go one of two ways, which is we could talk about what we saw in chronological order. Actually, I don't think that's the best way to cover it. I think it's better to start at the end when they showed like a, an image or put it up on screen, an image of how the whole thing works. And I think you've already started to touch on this a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think this is actually quite cohesive, right? I really like it. So the, the, one of the slides they talked about, there's the, I always, I always find it funny when you, you see, um, as well with tech companies, they talk, always talk about the gap, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's always a gap. There's a skills gap. There's, there's a data gap. <laughs> there's a X, Y, Z gap. There's always a gap. And in this case, the gap is between the, um, where people mostly work and where your insights live. And this is, I think, and your data is stored and trapped in the chasm of doom. Um, but I quite like this as a concept because it's true. Like, yeah. Anyone that works with data is like, well, yeah, that's that, that's exactly it. But what's quite nice is at the end, we, with this, um, <laughs> the Einstein One platform, you now have <laughs> this uh, really clear set of, again, words are important here. You can call it capabilities. You can call it silos. <laughs> you can call it um, lanes. Um, yeah. There, there's a lot of different words you can use for, for this uh, columnar structure. Um, yeah. I think you had, you, had a, you had a good way of putting this. Yeah, I think the, the way I said it was a centralization of the platform, a, decomp a decomposition of the products and uh, the product, sorry, the products have become experiences and yeah. a decomposition of the features. So there's like three steps to that. Yeah. So first, bring everything under one roof. Second, uh, take those products and turn them into experiences. In fact, I think the diagram says connect, prepare, model, contextualize, answer, engage, act. Which is you the know, flow. This is basically the journey through desktop, prep, and the cloud, but now all under one roof, right? But it's the very making, last... It's making sure not to call it prep, desktop, Correct. Cloud. Yes. It's saying, did not see that this is your yeah. analysis flow. We yes. talked in the last yeah. pod about yeah. analysis is changing and people, the way that people interact with information and insight is different. And I yeah. did my cursory glance to the knowledge curator. Um, they did not once mention server, cloud, no. prep, or desktop. Those, that, that is all desktop. Well, those desktop are extremely deliberate move. No, no. From authoring from got a shout out, not desktop. Desktop public. Yes, that was like in here's what we've done in yeah. the here's what we've done bit. It wasn't in the in the future in the bit. There was nothing the about anything in the anything in the past, right? So. Very deliberate, I think. I think it's, these are subtle things, but I think it's a very deliberate choice um, in there. What, uh, and, to, and to be honest, the writings have been on the tea leaves for a while. This, this is pretty obvious. I think everyone's figured this out. Um, so, yeah. And what is interesting about this as well is, I, I said we said this in the podcast, right? Like, Tableau's idea of work 
<laughs> involves Salesforce, Slack, I mean, Microsoft Office has to be there, of course. Um, Workday. Um, does Salesforce own Workday? Workday comes up again and again and again in Salesforce decks, and I never know if there is some sort of relationship there or if this is just like, uh, you know, like Sel uh, Snowflake and Sigma like to pair yeah. together because Sigma drives consumption for Snowflakes and <laughs> Snowflake loves that, so everyone's happy. I don't know if it's one of those kinds of symbiotic relationships where Workday has some sort of integration with correct. Salesforce. It is yeah. correct. Salesforce and Workday form strategic partnership 24 there you go. July 2024. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. And so the only thing I'll call out here, I don't want to spend too much time on this, is they're very much pushing into this vision of a workflow without overtly calling it that. And I think it's it's sort of um it's sort of interesting because it what, everything they demoed was a workflow. Everything they demoed was a flow from question to answer to action to engagement, right? Everything was that kind of thing. But they never really called it that. They never called out that sort of journey. They just kept on showing it, but they didn't call it out. And I think that's sort of a strange missed opportunity. Uh, I think there is actually a benefit in, in, in calling that. I think the only thing they did give it was a was a, a title which is workspaces so they 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 kind of create these workspaces where people come together that is the canvas as it were we'll come onto this later on but uh other than that yeah that that that's sort of sort of summary of it now two, before we move two, on two quick hits i've got go on go on hit me hit me so the two quick hits are first of all the four common challenges they talked about are spot on right mm -hmm. like and oh yes yes the, yes, the good, insights good are yeah. often overlooked or ignored users don't trust the data the data landscape is large you can't reuse what you build yes absolutely and what are you going to say next yeah, yeah. and then and then it's like customers want one solution well i don't think they want one solution they just want a way of doing it that isn't hard um and those are two different things but when they say customers they mean cfos cfos want one solution <laughs> <laughs> the one, 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 one billing cycle yeah um, exactly the, and then the second thing is this is the first time we saw a rebrand of tableau's motto ever right like i think i talked yeah the fair to say yeah yeah that we've yeah. got see and understand data uh, as the original slogan then we help we help people see and understand data which is the full slide but the people was then the focus for a number of years with tableau blueprint mm -hmm. coming out but mm -hmm. this is the first time we've seen a real evolution of that into something different, which is we help people see and understand and act yes. on data. The third piece. Yeah. Right. Necessity in today's world. Let's be a honest. Action right? driven analytics, right? And yeah. what really what this calls for, and this is probably again, we should maybe have a, a full podcast on this based on some of the feedback we got from the last one. Yes. What does this mean for dashboards? Like yeah. if we're really calling this the, the flow, what, what does this mean for dashboards? I think Adam called it out, said, you know, he asked he asked uh, dashboard developers to start developing new skills, you know, become prompt engineers, um, start learning other uh, sort of supporting activities like data modeling. And to be fair, we're like we've been saying this for a long time. I think this is not, it's not new. And anyone who's working in the sector probably already knows this. You're hardly just using Tableau on its own. Um, but yeah, no, this was got called out. And, you know, that chasm slide came up again. I think we've seen that slide now four conferences in a row nearly. <laughs> all in different like, contexts yeah all in different contexts first it was a gap now it's the thing and now here's like the solution we saw it again so no very very um valid concept but ravi i said something to you at the end of the session and i said to you that we've seen everything they've showed in the session before and you didn't believe me i didn't believe I you took you to the I, I took you to the conference slides and I literally scrubbed through the entire section where they showed this at conference just three months ago, yeah. and it was all there. <laughs> exactly. And look, I, I admit I missed that. I think it was um, the conference screening situation where you have yeah, it, it zooms and changes a lot, whereas on, on the stream you have the slides always up and then a small bit of, yeah. of the video, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, you're right. This, this was absolutely there. A lot of the bits we saw, the decomposable, deconstructed, Workflow. Yeah. I think yeah. actually, um, many folks probably thought that was just um, just Salesforce. Like that, that that is the Salesforce cloud, and that's we what we said this at. right. Whereas yeah. brand new, whereas actually brand new, they had um, to come back and say no, this is Tableau. Yeah, that's what today was. Right, and I th and I think it's it's quite cool, right? If we if we now talk about the the almost demo we saw, we saw yeah, um, 
you know, Tableau Einstein now are now in Slack. Tableau Einstein yeah. now in the CRM. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we saw um, a bit more about this connected experience in the canvas, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's let's sort of let's break this down into some of the high level, and I'll call them out first, and we can go through them one by one. Sure. Firstly, the authoring experience, right? That was sort of the first thing they rushed to, just to tell you, hey, everything's still okay. Don't worry, don't worry. We've not this familiar not thing. It. It's still here. Everything Hill. you've learned, Hill. Is, Hill. we've Hill. just we've just stripped it of all those you know menus and features that you love to use. The little details. We've just made it simpler for you. Okay. Number two, workspaces like collaboration. And in the workspaces element, there was a little bit of new flavor, semantic models, uh, Einstein semantic was stuff. something they brought up. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then uh, composable data sets, so data modeling, support for metrics, um, all of that coming through. And the very final one that I think stood out to me was uh, the marketplace, giving people a canvas to go and monetize their input into Tableau. This almost feels like to me, someone's looked at Tableau public and said, hey, we need to make something money out of this. Like, <laughs> create a marketplace, get this awesome work, not just being sent out for free. Let's start skimming off the top of this. Um, but anyway, we can come back to all of those. Where do you want to start? I'll give you. I'll give you the floor to choose a choose a starting point. <laughs> let's start with marketplace. Actually, yeah. Right. Let's start where we just left off. Let's, yeah. Let's just, let's just leave straight into marketplace because I think marketplace yeah. is a really fun concept, and, and I've got a, a small bone. To, to pick with the current marketplace, the where yeah. you can go get some Viz extensions. Which one, Ravi? Which one? The Viz Public or the Viz extensions? They're both marketplaces. For One's sure. free though. <laughs> well, this is about what we're about to get into. You, you then download, yeah. you know, if you say, let's say you want a um, complex chart type, let's say a radar, yeah. you go onto the um, Viz marketplace and then you type in radar and there's four. You can choose from yeah. four, three, four, two, whatever it might be. Yeah. Both are free until you use it. And then mm -hmm. when you want to save your formatting, you have to then pay <laughs> yeah. for your extension to be unlocked. Now, if that there's no in-app purchases like you do in the app store, there's nothing that yeah. tells you actually this isn't actually you have to get free. Get in touch with the developer, yeah. Unless yeah. you get in touch with the developer, and there's no cost, and then you have to reach out, yeah. Yeah. which is fine. Like yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not against people looking to monetize this, but I think the um, they're, they're it's not the Figma it's... marketplace where all of that is just done in one place. It's not. Um, yeah. It's not a mature looking marketplace, even though I think they've got many examples. But that's to coming pull from. Um, I, I believe. I believe that's coming, and it, and like this is almost showing that extension where you can see like this this dashboard or this this uh, canvas yeah. you can purchase yeah. for one hundred twenty nine ninety nine. Um, it's there, right? The biggest mistake with the current marketplace was to build its foundations on top of the Tableau Partner ecosystem. Having Tableau partnership be the requirement was just the wrong place to start because inherently, where is all the value? Where is all the goodwill? It's not in the Tableau partner ecosystem. Sorry to say that. It's actually in the community, right? All of the people that work for those same companies do good stuff in the community. It's the individual people. As well. So yeah. to so, so to put it in the partner ecosystem means you had to wait seven months to get into the ecosystem. It's not a smooth process. I had Tristan on the channel talking yeah. about how painful it was. And the only reason he got through was because he knew someone. It's not really like that accessible. And so that that to me is the biggest mistake. There's so much good value in there. Um, the people who've sort of jumped the hurdles to get their stuff in there, really high quality work, unfortunately buried under bureaucracy, which is a real shame. I'm hoping this fixes this. This fixes. I, I, I have no doubt will improve, and I think putting it front and center almost sets that signal. No, this is here to stay. I, yeah. I think I know accelerators work really well. I like it. I think they're they're quite a good uh, use case for this sort of thing. Where you know, actually, here's a dashboard that everyone can use. Like you know, there's a Tableau Cloud accelerator that gives you all of your data sources. You get TS content, TS users, TS whatever it else might be for your Tableau Cloud mm. platform. You connect it up, and you away you go. It's already plugged in. You can start analyzing your data. Super. Yeah. This yeah. this plus then the connected workspace puts that on steroids. I think it's, I think the um, connected workspace and the new sort of experience of using Tableau, I am genuinely really excited about. I think it's going to be yeah. such a good innovation game changer that allows people to really get stuck into it. Um, yeah. And understand the flow and and the biggest one collaboration commits and the fact that. <laughs> Suddenly, you don't have to do a data source audit um, to find out what calculations <laughs> are being used elsewhere, and you don't have to buy Correct. Tableau Pulse. 
to make sure your lineage is correct. Hopefully, well, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it gets packaged <laughs> in knows? Diablo Pass. Pass. Who knows? But I, I, yeah, the marketplace yeah. is a good is a good bad, is a good thing. thing. I think it's good. Say Tableau Pulse and Tableau Plus. Tableau Pulse, Tableau Plus, Tableau Pulse. Yeah, t- Tableau don't Pulse. don't don't try and get me to say that. I have. To, I actually, before I record videos, sit in front of the camera camera and go Pulse Plus Pulse Plus. plus. <laughs> 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 then I start recording. Anyway, marketplace. I think quite a positive change. Hopefully, all the back end changes to support that are good. Where shall we go next? Your, your, uh, workspaces. Your we, yeah, we've touched on workspaces. Let's go there. Yeah, let's go to workspaces because I think this is uh, this is a reimagining of what I would call projects inside of Tableau. Uh, no, ditching the project concept, the folder concept, quite a dated concept. It's kind of funny because this really borrows from uh, apps like I think of today, like Notion, where there is no such concept as a folder. Instead, Block you have containers. these these those blocks, right? And so what they're doing here is getting rid of projects and creating. Uh, spaces, workspaces where teams can collaborate. And in those workspaces, you have multiple assets um, and everything that makes those assets is decomposable. So this is what we said before, like you take the prep experience, the desktop experience, the cloud experience, you get rid of all of it. And instead you just bring back the features as different experiences. So you have the altering experience, uh, the, um, the semantic models, the prep flows, the data sources, the metrics, um, all of those are now just sort of in constituent parts. Again, this will be up on screen. Exactly. And I think that's actually quite a powerful thing. If anything, this is, this is the biggest value out of this whole thing. Like, you know, uh, you'll remember the video we made about, um, like what I want to see in the future version of Tableau. The one they took this concept to the nth level. Yeah. <laughs> They took this to the nth level. This is exactly the same concept, but I think they imagined it in a much, much, much more sort of, I think, uh, flexible way. Like they can build on this in so many interesting ways in the future. Yeah. And it feels structured for third parties to be able to come and play with it through APIs. It feels like you're going to be able to query stuff. The metadata APIs, I think, is going to become alive. Right, the VizQL able yeah. to the VizQL yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. The VizQL engine like all of that stuff uh, VizQL data service sorry is this what sorry, it's called yeah, um, being able to BDA. query specific data from different like visualizations bring those together the Pulse API being able to query the stuff out of coming out Tableau Pulse having that turn up in apps I think fantastic so they are really building the platform they're really building the back end of that. And it's all starting to come together. And I think things are falling into place. I think, you know, multi-factor analysis feels to me like the most important component that enables most of this, right? Um, and I think what I said to you, and we, we used an analogy around the house here, yeah. which is they've built the front door and the back door. And now what they're about to do is furnish the house, right? Yeah. Like, I think that's what I, you I said. Think, yeah, exactly. It's like you, you've got the front door, back door, you've got the four walls, you've got the roof. Yeah. Now you need to work out. Am I going to put some stairs in? It's airtight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 where, yeah. where are the walls going? Um, yeah. which, which is going to be in my living room? What is the, is the feng shui, how do I set this up so the feng shui is right for me? Now, yeah. now imagine this as you extend that into like every user has their house or every product yeah. or every dashboard is a house. You can then borrow from the building site of this collection of tools to construct mm-hmm. it. Now, what this really, Again, the question comes back to what does it mean for dashboard designers, creative dashboard designers who want to build UI UX experiences mm-hmm. in Tableau. And the feeling I'm getting is you can do that wherever you want, guys. It's not might not be Tableau desktop. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they're going to talk about it at Dreamforce. That's what they kept on saying. You know, yeah, we're going I, to I'm, showcase a new authoring experience at Dreamforce. 100%. But I think I do think you're you're absolutely right. This this is um and they said it a couple of ways, a, c- a couple of different ways, you know, building an experience that is um, really going to enable the end of line analyst, the actual business user, rather than the, the analytics professional the, the bottom, to do what they need right, to do. If you think of this as a triangle, you've yeah. got coders, data engineers at the yeah. top, as is the smallest amount of people that have this capability, data scientists, you know, like mm-hmm. the, the demand is high and the supply is still low comparatively to what the, the industry supposedly needs the middle layer is an analyst as, as me and you know as, as we yeah. are um and then the bottom layer is actually the 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 business user who 
can do a bit of analysis, but really they just want they just want the warm blanket of a spreadsheet to keep them warm at night. Blah blah blah. Um, but they still have questions, and again, we're, we're questions rich and time poor. So yeah. instead of trying to learn how um, an analytics works um, and how to get master a tool or code, just just go go compose some compose some stuff based on this this mart I've got in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that's a good segue onto the authoring experience we did see a bit of, which is the first thing they kind of rush to say is, look, hey, this is the same experience that you're familiar with. Things are in the sort of the wrong order, but it's fine. You know, filters was at the top, pages were second. That's not how it is in the product, but anyway. For um, now. <laughs> um, but I think it was interesting that they said, you know, columns and rows, um, you know, metrics, calculate, all, the, all those things you're used to seeing, the, the points of references, the signs on the road remain. The road is just going to be different. It's and like I think that was a board. nice touch. It's like driving a yeah. boat. That was a nice touch. Um, I do feel like they're moving the furnishings around, right? Like, you know, Tableau's interface is quite a busy one. And, you know, there's so many menus the icons and are options and right clicks. Yeah, exactly. This just feels like they only bring stuff up when you need it. So they're going to try and put some of that power into the actual capability. And I guess this is the benefit of building it in the browser. You can do that. Right? The, the kind of heritage of Tableau desktop as we know it today doesn't let you do that very easily. But in the browser, as everything is going these days, um, yeah, this is going to make sense. And I think I'll call out this. Everyone's sort of been a little bit reluctant about the web browser version. Let's just say it now. Everyone is building products in the browser. I don't know of a single tool, a single analytics tool, any new technology tool that isn't starting in the browser. It's just, it's just a common way. So as much as we all might not be sort of bought into it and as much as it does cause experience, you know, issues on our laptops, you know, running those things locally, um, they have to get good at it. And that's sort of where they're going to go. But yeah, more at Dreamforce essentially for this experience. Yeah. There's not much more to say about it because it, it's broadly just the same, just looks different. Dare I say it's in the flow, right? Like you, you, hey. you're only bringing through things that are useful <laughs> in that flow of analysis that they've called out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, the next bit was uh, data, data modeling slash metrics slash. Um, Same as always, sort of, right? Yeah, yeah. I think this to me feels like a repackaging of lots of the powerful stuff we have today. Just a much nicer user interface, um, bringing things in a much nicer way. I think a more prominent placement of Einstein to help you arrive at those things a little bit faster. Suggestions being suggested in there. Um, you know, everyone has adopted these uh, three uh, stars as AI uh, signal uh, identifiers. So they have suggests on the toolbar, they have suggestions for things to add to the model. And I think given we have multi-factor analysis, it's very obvious that, you know, this is essentially the cohesive vision for that. So yeah, um, yeah I think that'd be really cool. The Anything else to say on, on data sources? No, it'll no, be fine. No, and like, I think, it, yeah, right. this is all, this is all like, Tableau workbench stuff we talked again in the last yes. last yes. pod, right? Like yes. when we talked yes. about connect experience of prep desktop server, um, or like, you know, the heavy lifting stuff. This is the heavy lifting. But again, there's still use there's still a step prior to this of yeah. curation, of creation, yes. of monitoring. And this is where yeah. like I, I don't feel you know, if someone's sitting here being like, Yeah, but my thing's prep or my thing's desktop or my thing is a bit of server management and making sure the experience works. Your job isn't going away. It's just evolving. It's just evolving into change. something where, you know, you're doing it in a different step and the mode of delivery, you know, you, I feel like this is like almost what the Explorer license was created for, right? Like this is yep. it. <laughs> you got viewers who just yep. consume and look, but these are people who will explore your data, like truly explore your data. Um, and you still have creators who create the, the 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 bones and the foundations and put the bricks together so yeah yeah but it's okay absolutely. like you know, again it's optimistic gravity here being like yeah it's okay <laughs> yeah um the final thing i will say and this this is the i'm going to use this term and it's it's the sales falsification of tableau it feels like this is what the acquisition was really leading to and i you know, I don't know whether this is a fair thing to say, but I think one or two things would have happened here. 
either Tableau have looked at the feature list, sorry, Salesforce have looked at the feature list and gone, look, it's just easier to start afresh with a reimagined experience to tackle all of these things. At the same time, the people who are so invested into the current heritage that all they want is just Tableau to just to solve this one problem. I think something we've seen today is people going, oh, how is this going to help me with Power BI? It's like, I don't think that's the focus of this. Yeah. <laughs> Give me I don't think this is the focus of that. <laughs> it's in the browser. Um, uh, I don't think that's the focus of this. This is very much, I think, Tableau taking the opportunity, sorry, Salesforce taking the opportunity to look at the feature list, look at what people are asking for and just build a whole new experience out of it and tidy the whole ship up. But it comes at a cost. And that cost, I think, comes with what I think is about to come even messier experience, understanding what part is Tableau, what part is Salesforce, what part is some other ecosystem. And when you go and package up your experience of Tableau, how on earth does this come together? They've snuck in data cloud, they've snuck in Slack, they've snuck in, uh, dare I say, Workbench and Microsoft and all this other stuff. There's obviously Salesforce. And then there's Tableau, and Tableau in itself is not straightforward. Tableau has many pricing things. They've just announced Tableau Plus, which, if I think about it, might be a sleight of hand, and maybe we should have seen this coming. What if Tableau Plus is the thing you have to announce first to be able to say, Tableau Plus will be the thing you buy to get access to Tableau Einstein, right? It's kind of what you said at the beginning, gone full circle, Ravi, right? And for every other Tableau experience, you can carry on as you are, Tableau legacy, let's call it, right? You want your cloud, you want your server, go over there. But if you want this new experience, you have to purchase Tableau Plus. Carrot and stick, right? Carrot and stick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think this sort of, but I didn't don't understand why they just didn't call it Tableau Plus. It, it's kind of inherent because yeah. you have to get Tableau Plus to get the AI features. So Tableau Einstein yeah. is Tableau Plus. And like, so like, what am I buying? Am I buying Tableau Einstein or am I buying Tableau Plus? It's like, this it's kind of like a really strange to, to your procurement department. And this is going to be amazing for um, Salesforce Tableau sales teams. And this is why a Tableau sales oh, account manager doesn't necessarily exist anymore, right? It's it's right, a Salesforce right. account manager that you're you're assigned who might then have your Tableau accounts amongst others within the ecosystem, because they might explain and they might understand it better and, and try and ups, upsell upsell you some stuff. But but um, the losers are partners. I, the partners are the losers, like specialist partners. True. Who who the possibly are, are specialized uh, might struggle with this this new world because. As you say, what are you selling? But I think Tableau have given them the ramp with the APIs, Absolutely. new capabilities the APIs, in the marketplace. The yeah. marketplace. That's that's the safe. That's the parachute landing. If migration. You're a partner, generally, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's the parachute landing. The stuff they don't want to do, frankly. Um, <laughs> are you a Tableau partner, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, I think there is there is though. Oh, there's just a tough thing. I still can't quite place this 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 transition. We didn't get a launch date, yeah. So the house has just got a front door and a back door and some walls. But my point to this is, what was this then, right? So this was trailer. like like it, what, what what was this webinar? Uh, and we said at the beginning, this webinar was a restating of saying this is Tableau. Fine. We didn't see anything radically new. That's not an unfair comment to say. If you go back to Tableau Conference, uh, Keen, I'll put the timestamp in the description of where to start and where to finish. You can go see it. It's all there. It just wasn't as linear as what we saw today. We didn't get a launch date. We just got Dreamforce as a next point of call in a month's time, basically. You get more right? information. Yeah, more information. That's when I hope to see a date for general availability. And... I, you know, let's not kid ourselves. This wasn't something they started at conference. This is this started a long time ago. I don't know if what we saw today was a was a demo of the actual product or a Figma demo. I don't want to be unfair to anyone at Tableau who's been, you know, working super hard and to get this out. And I'm sat here saying now it's a Figma demo. But Figma the reality is, 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 but the reality is, there are very many Figma demos. <laughs> 
in Tableau Keynote. So it's not like it's not hard. I think you have to start going back to basics and doing more honest demos to kind of get rid of that thing. And maybe it's just something that I know because you can't I'm in do the weeds here. Necessarily right. Right. Exactly. Um, so the best way to show that is don't just demo it. Let us get our hands on it. Yeah. Give us, give us a beta portal. Give us somewhere to go. Give us somewhere to go and try the new authoring experience, even if it's super limited. A bit like we had with the Tableau Public, you know, new Vistar types. Give us a little way to sample this new thing yeah. in Tableau Cloud. Give me a toggle so I can toggle the new experience and see what it's like, and then toggle it back to a safe experience. And then all of that stuff can, I think, really start to make this feel like a bit more real. I think this but, is the trailer. My, my, yeah. my view is this is like a a trailer of what's to come. Um, I don't think this is necessarily saying this is what you'll get. Forward-looking statements, man. You, you saw that forward-looking yeah. statement slide? It was straight yeah. there. First first minute. Don't make any purchases and decisions based on what you see here today. Um, True. So, True. no, it's. It, I think it's it's definitely a trailer. I think it's a... It's a drop in the pond to see what what ripples, um, and I yeah. think it's a it's it's showing your cards to an extent and giving that ability for people like you and I to react, right? Like and and other other folks to get an idea of what's to come and start thinking in in that way, where you're not again, as you say, you're not pulling the rug from under them at Dreamforce, being like you've all lost your jobs. We are now all canvassers. Yeah, and. And so actually, you, you remind me of a point I was going to make earlier on, which is maybe that was the whole point of today, to get the people who are really deep in the weeds with Tableau to see this and react Got now. The parapet, yeah. So that when you do it at Dreamforce, all the people who don't typically see Tableau, it's more of a like, wow, this is super interesting. It's going to be powerful. It's going to blow open Salesforce. Because Einstein Analytics was the thing that was supposed to solve that, and it didn't. That's why my, Tableau is here. My, my and, and they've sort of, yeah. My feeling is what we'll see is trailer one here. No, sorry. TZ trailer, TC. Uh, sort of the uh, cinematic trailer today. The right. launch um, of part one at Dreamforce. It won't be till TC, I don't think, that we'll see an actual product ready for GA. And because that will be the big splash. Because again, you, you were talking about how do you take people on that journey? Journey one yeah. happened. We're in journey two. Journey three will happen, and then we'll get this. This is now real. Like you've come around because in the in the last podcast, you didn't believe me when I said we won't see anything this year, and I said we wouldn't see anything for another year. Anything new? Like, sorry, nah. sorry. Connected experience. Fine, 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 yeah. fine, 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 fine. Uh, what I will say, we we will see new things within the current experience. I, I think fine, we'll, fine. I mean, I'm pro I, I, you're probably right. I have come around, and I've convinced myself in the. <laughs> recording of this podcast actually the timeline i've just stated makes a lot more sense for the yeah. user base that currently exists the user base that currently exists are not as plugged in they're not as cult like they're not the, not the people who are desperate for a b and c they are people mm. who are just simply doing their jobs and wanting to do better quicker faster and deliver how do i yeah, do my job learning fast? tablet today yeah correct this is correct just 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 need to the whole thing so yeah i think I think that's that's covered most of it. Um, this was meant to be a quick podcast, Tim. It was quick, thirty-seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Regular size. Uh, yeah, no, it's a quick reaction. We'll get this edited. Um, I'll try and turn it around quickly. I will do like a here's what was in the session, like a very summarized five ten minute video after this. Um, so if you're wondering where that is, yeah, like you know, I've got stuff to do. Uh, my wife is nearly due, um, so <laughs> I might not get around to that for a while. So this will have to be it. This will have to be it. So for um, to be yeah, for now. Exactly. Right. Great to connect, Ravi. Fourth wave is here. The, the, the well, is now the old. wave, the wave is uh, the wave is broken. Sure. Now we get to see what happens with the with the sand. <laughs> oh, that was a well, crap ending, but. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, the fourth wave is here. Um, yeah, let's, let's yeah. see. Let's see where we end up. Um, but it's Absolutely. exciting. I mean, I'm really excited yeah. for connected workspaces. Um, Me too. Super. Thanks, Tim. Good. Take care.